Hi everyone, welcome back and this is the review for the Intel 11th Gen Core i7-11700K. Now in this review, I'll be using the MSI Z590 Torpedo motherboard and I will be covering the performance, the IPC improvements and power draw temperature and I'll be rambling about my thoughts about this processor. Now let's begin. I have my tablet here because I don't want to miss any points. Starting off, the comparison will be up against the 5900X because I do not have the 5800X. So the 5900X and the 5800X, there should be very little difference. After all, they are very good processors, just the difference on the cores. So what we can see now, let me, sh let me show you the benchmark now, is that the 11700K is able to match the 5900X. But, I mean, you look at the numbers, total them up and I saw it's less than 1% apart. And once I overclocked the 11700K, the 11700K actually has a 3% lead. It's not much, but it's really good for an Intel processor. I'm actually surprised to see this. I was expecting less, but really good stuff. Now, I'm sure you notice, unlike my other videos where there's 10 titles, this time there's just 5 because I've selected 5 titles where I think they are the most CPU sensitive. So running at 1080p with an RTX 3080, it will show great difference when I tweak around, especially for the overclock difference and the swap of the processor. And speaking of overclock, yes, I ran it at 5 GHz. It's just a matter of setting the multiplier to get 5 GHz speed and setting the voltage, the V-Core, to 1.35 and it went perfectly on first boot and with all my benchmarks done, there's not a single crash. So this means that the processor can actually possibly go higher or run at the same speed with a lower voltage. Now, next up, productivity. I do not have any productivity benchmarks because there's no 5800X around. I would like to do fresh ones, but you know, with all the updates and such, it, may not be fair. However, I think Cinebench R20 should be quite alright. So I've used the numbers from my 5800X review and as you can see, for the multi-core workload results, clearly the Ryzen is better. So productivity-wise, um, I have a 10600 and I have a Ryzen 5 3600. The 10600 is of no match, so I'm going to, well, based on my experience, I don't think it's a contest when it comes to that aspect. Now, next up, the IPC. So, like what I mentioned, I have a 10600. I don't have any other, I don't have the 10700K. If I had, I would have done some comparison, but unfortunately, I don't have. So, in order to compare it with the 10600, I just go with whatever settings available. So, it's actually 3.3 GHz on both running single core tests using uh, Cinebench R20, and I can see some performance improvement on the 11th gen. So, well, it's not something unexpected. After all, every gen should see some improvement. So there's improvement. I'm not, I can't say that's good or bad because it's an R20 score. I can't make anything out of it. And lastly, let's talk about the power draw and temperature. So when I ran Blender test with a GTX 1050 on stock, the wall draw comes to 280 watts. And if I, when I overclock it to 5 GHz with 1.35 volts, the power draw went up to 360 watts on the wall. And when I pair it with the RTX 3080, with the overclock setting, of course, and I play um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, wall draw comes to a whopping 550 watts. So this is a hot processor. And my cooling was using, I was using Silverstone's Permafrost 360 millimeter radiator AIO. On stock, it's already getting 71 degrees Celsius with the Blender load test. I'm using the BMW CPU test. And on overclock, it comes to 87 degrees Celsius, which is hot, especially when you consider that this is a 360 millimeter radiator AIO. Now, let's come to, let's uh, talk more like, um, to summarize the whole thing. I think it's of great value for money if you compare it to the Ryzen 7 5800X. The 5800X was launched at about RM200,000 plus over in Malaysia 
and the price now is about 2001, 2002, more or less, around that range. Let's just say 2000 to 2002, while this one comes in at RM1800. So it costs less and it performs the same and comes to the gaming benchmarks. And when you overclock, it does better. So the only thing you have to concern, be concerned of is the power draw, the heat. And of course, you need a proper board, a Z590 board with re reasonable VRM to handle the load. So in that sense, it's great. Um, but if you, and then if you compare it to, let's say the 11900K, I think the 11900K is just a joke because both are 8 core 16 threads, just that 11700K is price higher at around 2004, 2005 like that, which is about the 5900X price. So either way, and when it comes to that price point of about 2004, 2500, then this uh, Ryzen 9 5900X is the clear winner. Definitely, I don't know who will go with the, the 11900K. The 11700K at two third the price of that 11900K with same cores and threads, just that by default has a lower uh, clock speed of which you can overclock, you can tweak what you want and still get very similar results. I think that's good. However, if you still can, if you are running a 10700K, then there's no need to upgrade. If you can find a lower price 10700K, I think that's a good bargain. Like I don't have the, uh, the processor, so I can't tell you which one's better. But you can't. I find that you can't go wrong with either of them. Personally, I am actually impressed with this release. I know some reviews say it's not good and all, but maybe that's based on the US pricing. I don't know. But over in Malaysia, like what I said compared to the Ryzen 7 5800X, it costs less and it performs well. In fact, you look at my benchmark, it performs like the 5900X, that's about, that's a RM, for RM600 extra. So it is good value actually. So, all right, go back from me for this processor. Now I hope to be able to test the 11600K as well because I, I've seen quite some positive reviews on that one. So, all right, that's it for this review. Huge thanks to Ideal Tech for preparing this unit for me. The guys at Ideal Tech, they've been my go-to for, for quite a while for certain products, and they've always been the one that's uh, preparing, being able to allocate some Intel processor for me to, to review. So, huge thanks to Ideal Tech. Do check out their check out their website. I'm uh, giving the links at the description. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.